I think champagne is, is I mean, it is so clean. I think you would have a hard time. I mean, I, I think you would have a hard time, like, stressing it to make it, co- you know, to throw off any any off f- aromas or flavors, from my experience anyway. Uh, at least at low temps. I think if you do, if you, I mean, at least at low gravities, like, if you're doing a higher gravity beverage, that's probably a whole, I can imagine that that would be a different story. But I think when you're using champagne yeast for lower uh, gravity beverages, that it, it really does well. I mean, it's extremely clean. Yeah, no matter what you do. Yeah. The little voice in my head that I used champagne yeast for a long time on my meads way back when I first got started and back in the 80s, but because um, there wasn't any other yeast available to us at that point in time, yeah. at least that we knew of. Um, and certainly I'd never heard of Lalvin at that point, and I didn't come at this from a winemaker's perspective, so I was coming at this cold. But anyway, um, you know, I love champagne yeast because it worked. It did work very well for me for a lot of things, but I keep going, yeah, but if I go two weeks in low alcohol, then it's going to burn dry every single time, you know? So right. basically you but just that's... have to keg it before it's done, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's typically what I do. Or I use fl- either flip top bottles if I was doing, or pla- like I love there's and those amber PET bottles are work really really well, <laughs> and you can tell when they're carbonated because you can feel them. Um, yeah. But yeah, kegs are definitely my go to. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, yeah, granted, like so if you're doing, especially depending on the short mead, but if you're doing a session mead and you're keeping it at you know 64, 65 degrees, two weeks is fine. If you're doing a two week you know, if you give some, if you're something sitting at like 70, you know, in the 70s or higher, then yeah, you definitely have, it, it's, yeah, it'll probably be eat down to nothing in two weeks, depending. Yeah. Maybe I guess I could ferment it lower temp. Hmm. Now you got me thinking, I'm going to have to play around with this. Now you got me ordering a 10 pack of Red Star Champagne yeast. <laughs> Maybe, Manny, you just have no self-control. I don't. <laughs> Mary, you should see his TARDIS. It's his garage, and he's converted it, and it's got, like, it's got like uh, chest freezers and kegerators and, and multiple, most, multiple uh, pour, pouring capability, and he's got tubing running all through the ceiling and chillers, and oh, my God, it's just... <laughs> That sounds pretty good. It is so brutal. I will say, wait, what are, the champagne that I use that I like the best? I used to use Lalvin, but then Red Star is cheaper around here. That's um, right. And the one that I used, I think, was the Blue Packet. For Red Star or for Lalvin? For Red Star. Oh, okay, the blue one. It's kind of fine. It's, yeah, Premier Cuvée because that oh, is Premier the Cuvée. one. Okay. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, that's the one that's the true champagne. Champagne yeast, I okay. Think. I thought you meant the one oh. that labels champagne yeast, which will burn like yes. about twenty five percent, and it throws all sorts of weird mm-hmm. off notes, and yeah. yeah. Although honestly, at lower alcohol, I haven't, I have never noticed that much of a difference. But yeah, that one is actually, I think they just actually they renamed it something else. Now it's called, now they call it, oh, Premier Blanc. But the one that you want is the Premier Cuvee because that's the one that's like extremely tolerant. The yeah. fermentation temperature. Five ninety five, like that's insane. Plus, it tolerates a really low pH. And I do, I do a chapter on boozy kombuchas in the book. So uh, basically, you're making a typical kombucha, which you know ends up pretty acidic at the end. And then I add, you know, additional uh, sugars, whether it be I usually use white sugar, but you could use honey or anything. Um, flavoring and and again, champagne yeast very has a wide range of pH tolerance. So it it really is a workhorse. Yeah. I used Premier. It was so funny. I didn't start having meats go sideways on me until I went off of. I was using at that point in time. I was using Premier Cuvee and Montrachet almost exclusively. They were my kind of my go-to, and then I started discovering Lalvin, and um, then I played with Y yeast and White Labs, and you know just all kinds of stuff. And the funny thing was, is I never had a meat go sideways on me until I started stepping out into other, into other yeasts that were more <laughs> touchy, you know, that are that, yep. that require that require more hands on. Because I'm I'm one of those. Oh crap! Has it been one or two days since I stirred my meat? You know, so. Yep, it's the lazy. Yeah, send yourself phone reminders. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Well, I'm gonna try that this time and see if it actually improves my brewing since it, <laughs> I, it worked for gardening this year. Oh, oh, okay. 
Yeah, I set myself reminders when to plant my uh, when to plant my seeds indoors and when to actually put them in the ground. I support this. It sounds like a very good idea. Yeah, it's a great idea for us idiot procrastinator types who can never get anything yes. done. Yeah, that's, the only thing. <laughs> that's honestly, if I don't set phone reminders for stuff, then I'll just I get busy doing something else and. And many of the things three weeks that I later, did, it's like, yeah, oh crap! Exactly, it's like crap. I said I was going to do blah blah blah, and I d- haven't done it. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I'm I'm terrible. <laughs> I I'm mono I'm mono focused, and I'm a procrastinator. So I'll get going on something else entirely, and then just completely forget that I was supposed to do whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was the other. Speaking of kombucha and champ, or the champagne made me think of kombucha. The other fun thing I have done, Chris and I have done, is we've done kind of shortcut sour meads where we do kombucha, blend kombucha and short mead. Ooh. Mm. That's an interesting approach. I like that. And usually, if you do kombucha and you have a pretty clean, you know, it depends on your, every kombucha is different, right? Every scoby is different. Uh-huh. And it depend, you know, will depend on your, you know, it's very temperature dependent and what you feed it and everything. Um, but if you have a kombucha that you're happy with, I don't like really acetic kombuchas. I like slightly cleaner kombuchas. Um, and if I do a secondary fermentation of kombucha with champagne yeast, it usually cleans it up a little bit. So I would make a short mead or session mead, make, you know, a secondary kombucha and then blend and that is a really nice way to get a um, to get kind of a you know a fun fun sour meat, especially if you add fruit like cherry or yeah something like that. Were you uh, were you making the meat as a fruit meat, or were you making a fruit kombucha, or both when you do these blendings? Uh, it depending. Um, uh, yeah, depending what I'm going for. Usually, I would. If I take, I guess it depends on the taste. Because if I know, like, if the short mead, wait, hang on a second. <coughs> Excuse me. If I, uh, I usually make like the fruit mead and then taste it, and if I want additional, do it in the kombucha. Interesting. My project, I'm mute my project so can... list just got twice as long as it was. <coughs> Fortunately, I don't have kombucha yet, so I can keep that one off my list. <laughs> well, I'm just thinking in terms of sour meads. I'd love to make some kombucha and then try doing that blending like she was saying. That's nah, really fascinating. I think we killed her. Sorry. <laughs> I had a, I've had allergies. and Oh, no. <clears throat> Drink water. Lack yeah, of alcohol. Could... Yeah, that might be it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Canadian. Okay, I have water now. Oh, that's good. One of our one of our listeners is uh, is teasing uh, is teasing AJ because she's Canadian. <laughs> It's a, it's a, it's, it's a okay. Peri- I'll just apologize. Yeah, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a periodic symbol, and it says E H or A, and then it says Canadium. <laughs> <coughs> I may have to get that shirt. <laughs> uh, I still need the one that says, "In my defense, I was left unsupervised." <laughs> I was left unsupervised. Yeah, never leave AJ unsupervised. It's just not safe. <laughs> <laughs> So, Mary, what are the chances we're going to be able to lure you out to a Mazer Cup one of these years? Um, possible, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I've never, I haven't, I love traveling for alcohol. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of it there. That's a great there. excuse. <laughs> we probably do, well, we, not, not now since we've been, since Chris is working on the brewery, but, um, but yeah, I think that'd be, that'd be fun. I think that would be. I'm yeah, not think, sure if the Mazer Cup could survive all three of us in the same yeah. room. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. we would get up to mischief. Ah, oh, now come on, <laughs> mischief's fun. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> then I'm going next year. <laughs> yeah, and, Ma- and Manny's going to be out there next year, so <laughs> we can get Manny in trouble and then just blame it on him. <laughs> That's right. Is the Manny, Manny going to do it? The Mazer Cup, is it always in the same place, or does it travel? And right now, it's still in the same place. There's talk that it okay, may that's travel what I in future years, yeah. But right now, it's still out in Colorado. But, that's uh, what I thought. It's a good time of year. Uh, God, there's going to be over a 1,000 meads there this year. 
I don't, yeah, I can't even imagine. Yeah, it's just crazy. And uh, the party pretty much is never ending for the entire week. Uh -huh. The MMA does. Uh, they have a year round pool and hot tub outside. That too. I yeah. mean, the, the, par the party is never ending. We know. We took advantage of it. It was. It was <laughs> we great. did. Yeah. And, a thousand uh, yeah. meats? Huh? Wow. A thousand yeah, meats, really? We were at nine. They were at nine ninety-five, nine eighty-five, something really close so, to a thousand this year, and it'll top a thousand next year. What are we gonna drink on the second day? I don't know. Uh huh. <laughs> and that's home. Well, we we'll just go off visit Kervin. That's what. That's right. <laughs> what was that, Mary? That's home. That's homebrew meads and commercial meads. That's home and commercial. Oh. Yeah, but the bulk of it <laughs> is home. It's about six hundred and fifty, seven hundred home and then three to five hundred commercial i don't know what the numbers are going to look like next year pretty much whatever they set the upper limit at that's where they end up <laughs> you know? yeah. that's awesome yeah that's awesome because i think it's cool to see to have an event where where you have homebrew beverages as well as commercial that's cool oh, yeah, to see no, like it started out as yeah. a it started out as a homebrew competition and then we added commercial well the, the 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 event that that um started it all started out as homebrew and then commercials were added and then the event that that event closed out was the international meat festival <laughs> it was home and commercial and then we opened up the new mazer cup which is not the one that ken had in michigan this is just where he's letting us use the name and that uh that's the one that's home and commercial and more home than commercial generally speaking Cool. Very but you cool. can come out and judge, and you know, and uh, you know, and there's parties going on every single night. MMA has a two-day conference, and it's entirely possible I might try to lure you out for that. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, that's one thing I ha I've not gotten my mead certification uh, yet, but I think it would be cool oh. to do. It's on the you, list. Yeah, if you know point. how to judge, then you don't. I mean, it's I nice mean, to judged, have, yeah. but it's not necessary. Yeah, yeah. I never yeah. got mine because I've been judging since long before there was a mead judge certification, and I yeah. didn't see any reason to go get it you know yeah but i do think it's cool that that people are actually being trained you know that there is a training yeah i think it's I think great that they did it yeah yeah i agree i remember being there when they brought out the sample questions before they actually put it together and we were all answering the sample questions and it's like <laughs> if this is a tuesday in november and it's below 60 degrees what sort of what sort of uh would uh you know what sort of cherries would you add to your cherry melomel um if your girlfriend was out that day, <laughs> you know, and it was like, what? <laughs> Whatever yeah. I find in the bottom of the freezer. Yeah. <laughs> I made mean, these questions were like, I'm sitting there on the floor with a pen and my tongue stuck between my teeth going, I don't even know what they <laughs> said. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> my answer was when the moon is full, you know, or something like that. So it was... <laughs> Yeah, that's, yep. Yeah, I one of these years I'm going to have the time to sit down and study for it and go ahead and take the thing, but I just haven't had the time, and so I'm not too worried about it, but, yeah. Yeah, yep. Yeah. But it's cool. I think it draw. you know, it attracts more people in oh, yeah. and, and also gives, you know, some kind of, I mean, I don't think that these, you know, I don't think that being certified or national judge or that you know that doesn't necessarily if you're not that it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not a good judge but mm -hmm. i think that it's it's uh, a good place to start and it's something for people to kind of um it's a great way people to learn it. it really is exactly they exactly. teach you a lot exactly. about what a good mead tastes like and and i'm assuming what a good beer tastes like and what you know you know the styles back and forth so you get a lot of i mean when i when people ask me well what do i need to know to be a good judge i go well first of all go here and learn all of this material and i send them to the bjcp website you know because mm -hmm. that's where all the great material is i mean shoot i go back and refer to it it's good material i just haven't gotten around to taking the test is all but um, yeah exactly yeah and i think one thing that i've had i've judged um quite a few homebrew competitions and the one thing that um, when I've been paired with a judge that hasn't had experience in a certain category. So if you haven't tasted, you know, the best thing that you can do is just drink more mead and actually think about <laughs> what you're drinking. Yeah. Um, and, you know, people don't always get the opportunity to, to drink mead and to be able to compare them and, 
um, and have a discussion. So I think, yeah, I think that's it's it's super cool. It is, yeah. That's something that we're planning on doing at the next uh, AMMA conference, which is at the same place in two days before the Mazer Cup. Um, is to have a sit down and taste meads, and this is what good tastes like. This is what here's what the off notes taste like. This is what you know to look for for these to find this flavor or that flavor. You know, to so that people can get. At-